Thank you, gentlemen. Thanks for your comments in part one of this uh, series material science video that uh, you wanted this uh, part two. That's why I decided to make this part two of this uh, series. Uh, in this video, we are going to move on from where we left in part one. We will proceed to see what is hyper eutectic steel, what is hypo eutectic steel, uh, what is pure light, and uh, then we will proceed to complete the understanding of the iron carbon diagram. Uh, having said that, uh, if you want part 3 which will deal with uh, heat treatment, uh, I guess uh, similarly you please uh, drop in your comments uh, requesting that. And uh, not to forget about the hydraulic courses which I am conducting, if you are uh, interested, uh, please uh, have a look at the QR code in the thumbnail, please scan that, uh, you will be directed to a Google form and once you fill up the Google form, you will uh, get into this hydraulic initiation program. You are watching Chief Engineer's Tea Time Talk, I am Ramesh and I will be piloting you through this channel. Uh, advance thank you for watching thank you so much happy watching thank you in this video we will uh, complete the iron carbon diagram and uh, understand what is eutectoid steel and types of eutectoid steels we will uh, just stop short of heat treatment which we need to uh, push it into the next video. In the previous video, we cooled pure iron till uh, approximately 1000 degrees C and stopped. We saw that uh, liquid mixture of iron and carbon transform into solid phase uh, basis the percentage of carbon. And we also saw what is the eutectic point and what is lubricant. We saw in detail the happenings in the, this part of the iron carbon diagram. Now in this video we are going to continue to cool iron to room temperature and also see what happens if carbon atoms are present. We will uh, further proceed to understand this part of the iron carbon diagram. I will be ignoring these parts which are in the actual diagram. Now if we cool iron further, iron changes its uh, crystalline form and becomes BCC type matrix that is body centered matrix. This happens at approximately 912 degrees C. Here you can see that the iron atoms occupy the 8 vertices and the center of the atom that is at the intersection of the two diagonals. This iron is called ferrite. You can see that on cooling, iron crystal releases 5 atoms. Keep this in mind because this is the one which is going to create all the magic further in this video. So you can remember it thus, as any substance tends to shrink while cooling, so does austenite. You can see that when iron atom cools down and shrinks, space is reducing. There is no space left for 14 of them. The atoms from spaces 10, 11, 12, 13 and 14 need to be squeezed out. They need to vacate and find their own way. Atom in space number 9, however, could be accommodated on compassionate grounds because some space is there and others can adjust. It now occupies the center of the crystal where the two diagonals meet. So effectively for every one austenite crystal, five iron atoms are released while it changes it from, uh, from austenite to ferrite. This is what is supposed to happen. We will stick to this very theoretical what should happen stuff in this part of the video to first understand the concept before we introduce practical constraints and make it more complicated. Will the iron actually change its crystalline structure at 912? What will these deported iron atoms do uh, will depend upon another player, yes, available carbon atoms. Remember we started off this video stating that steel contains iron atoms and carbon atoms. So the squeezed out iron atoms can recombine to form more ferrite or they can also combine with carbon atoms if available to form cementite. What will really happen will depend on a number of factors and circumstances. In this video, we are here to explore just that. The entire twist in the story is created by the presence of carbon atoms. How many are there? Are they available and how do they exist? The carbon atoms can basically exist in three ways. As free carbon, that is graphite as generally found in cast iron. As dissolved carbon in iron. In the molecule after combining with iron as in cementite. Here we can see the solubility of carbon atoms in austenite. The blue curve here representing the solubility of carbon in austenite. 
solubility means the ability of carbon to occupy the gaps inside the austenite molecule now as we, now as you see in the diagram the solubility of carbon is changing the maximum solubility of carbon in austenite being 2.06% at uh, 1147 degrees c so any cooling below 1147 c will result in various possibilities depending on the percentage of carbon as per the graph in this part of the ion carbon diagram we will be looking at these in the latter part of this video so let us concentrate on this part of the diagram first iron is in the form of austenite the change of state expected is the conversion from austenite to ferrite just as we saw here in the earlier video where this point denoted the lowest temperature at which iron and carbon can coexist in liquid form before a change of state from liquid to solid something very similar is happening here also we can see that this point is the lowest point at which iron and carbon mixture can coexist in the solid state where iron is in the form of austenite and carbon is dissolved in austenite below this temperature iron cannot exist as austenite it becomes ferrite now if we remember that ferrite formation will release five atoms from the crystal structure of austenite similarly the solubility of carbon in austenite also ends here so the 0.83% carbon atoms are free for use these carbon atoms combine with the necessary amount of iron to form cementite this is from one austenite cuboid so all these free iron atoms join together to form ferrite so we just saw that the unique combination of ferrite and cementite thus formed in this particular ratio is called pyrolite it is also called eutectoite steel suppose i start with iron carbon mixture of 1.5% carbon at 1600 c mixture is in a completely liquid state what happens when we cool as it touches the liquidus line here the iron starts separating as austenite remaining is liquid mixture containing carbon and iron but since austenite has the ability to dissolve carbon the remaining liquid need not necessarily get richer in carbon so further cooling results in more and more separation of iron as austenite from the liquid and it also dissolves more and more carbon so at approximately 1250 degrees centigrade here you see that there is no more liquid here we have complete austenite with all the carbon dissolved further cooling at approximately 920 degrees c we can see that austenite touching the acm curve now cementite start separating out because carbon cannot remain dissolved in austenite now you have the mixture bbking the eutectic reactions as we saw in earlier video video 1 cementite start separating the remaining being a mixture of austenite with carbon in dissolved condition so as cementite start separating out we have lesser and lesser percentage of carbon in austenite and the mixture travels to the left along acm curve when it reaches temperature of approximately 723 c you can see that we hit the eutectoid point wherein the entire austenite along with the dissolved carbon converts into a eutectoid solid structure steel structure called pyrolite pyrolite is nothing but a unique combination of ferrite and cementite where the carbon percentage is 0.83% and that we had already seen in the early part of this video we are just repeating it here now if we look at the second example where we start the cooling from say 1600 degree c with carbon percentage only 0.5% well it follow the same logic wherein the austenite start to separate at this point then we have only austenite with dissolved carbon till that till it touches the a3 curve at 770 degree c wherein the ferrite start separating out the resultant mixture of austenite with the dissolved carbon gets richer in carbon and moves to the right along a3 till it reaches the eutectoid point wherein the entire mixture transforms into pure light thus we see here that we have pure light plus ferrite so steels to the left of this point 0.83% carbon are called hypo eutectoid steels and steels to the right are called hyper eutectoid steels similarly what we left out in the first video similarly steels to the left of eutectic point of 4.3% carbon are called hypo eutectic steels and steels to the right of the eutectic point are called hyper eutectic steels essentially hypo eutectic steels and hyper eutectic steels fall into the category of cast iron on the cast iron side wherein we stopped the cooling in the first video somewhere here 
we see that on further cooling we can see that austenite plus transformed leduberite here i am so sorry since this topic is so vast we need to stop here and need a third video to look at the effects of heat treatment otherwise this video will get too long and uh, you won't have the patience to sit through what will happen if the iron supposed to be released during the transformation from austenite to ferrite find the gates closed before the great escape similarly what will happen if the dissolved carbon which is supposed to break free cannot so there are more twists and turns waiting to happen in this story which we need to wait till the third video where we will cover the heat treatment and the consequences thereof i hope you all enjoyed this video i really don't know how many of you will be excited to really go on further in this topic of material science anyway if you can just as in the previous video you can just uh, put in in the comment section that yes you want another one then i'll put in the effort otherwise have a great sailing i hope you enjoy this video thank you so much.